Hello and welcome to this week's trading strategy video with me David Jones and Trading 212. Now we've covered quite a lot I think in recent weeks. We've looked at price action, oscillators, moving averages, breakouts, false breakouts, all this sort of stuff. So I thought this week would be a good opportunity to maybe just pause a little bit and um, look at what are some pretty common trading mistakes. And when it comes to trading mistakes, you can make a really long list, but I thought for the purposes of this, because it's going to be a short video and um, people just don't have the attention span these days, um, let's look at the top three trading mistakes. Um, let's start off. Number one, you will have heard this before, and we're going to look at a real example from the last couple of weeks in a second. But I think one of the big problems is people cannot trade with the trend. They see a market, and there have been plenty of markets in recent weeks. Uh, the euro, oil, uh, stock markets. They see a market that's maybe doing that or doing that. And if a market's been going up, 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 they can't seem to bring themselves to buy into that market. They always want to try and pick the top. You know? So they're going against the major move in the market. And the same, of course, for falling markets. If a market is sliding, uh, plenty of people are trying to pick the bottom. But what are the chances if you have a market that's gone up for six months or down for six months that you nail the absolute turning point? It's highly unlikely, but let's look at a real example. Let's take a look at um, the euro dollar, which just recently moved out to two and a half year highs. There are so many markets we could pick at the moment when it comes to looking at trends, but let's go with euro dollar because it hit a two and a half year high last week and data shows that you know with some brokers something like 70 percent of clients were, were selling short the euro uh, but you're really trading against the odds you know in, in a trend like this in a strong uptrend our approach should be looking to buy the dips you know if you're, if you're selling short look at the sort of moves you're trying to catch they're, they're tiny moves like this what are the chances that you're going to pick the absolute top it's much easier to try and position yourself for maybe the next swing over the next few days, next few hours, next few weeks, you know, whatever your time frame is. So trading with the trend really should be at the core of our approach. Um, but it's one that, that so many uh, get wrong because psychologically it's a difficult thing to do. But I think you know, even in a trend like this, the market okay, has gone down for one day but has gone up in the view we're looking at here, broadly speaking, for the last, the last three months. So it's much easier to identify a trend on the chart, and it's pretty clear what the trend is here, and look to trade with that trend. So there we go. We want to try and trade with the trend. Put the odds in your favour. You know, if a market is, is going up over the time frame you're trading, look to be a buyer. If a market's going down, look to be a seller. I think this, the second, maybe more, more common problem, is um, trading too big. You know, people might open an account with, let's say, a thousand pounds, a thousand euros, a thousand dollars, whatever it is but they risk far too much on any one trade. And if they do a trade where they're risking losing 250 euros, pounds, dollars, whatever it is, that's a massive risk compared to the size of the account. And I think it's very difficult to look at a market objectively if you're in a trade, if every point the market moves against you or in your favour is a massive sum of money to you, whatever that sum of money is. You know, so I think we need to trade at a level where we're not obsessing about every small point move in the market. So I think it's a really important part of trading. You know, when you start off, and even if your account grows, think, well, look, am I really comfortable with the level of risk I'm taking here? Because if you're not, then every time the market moves a little bit against you, you'll be panicked into making, maybe making bad decisions, getting out of the trade too early, or setting your stop loss too tight. Which brings me, I think, to point number three. I think the third, maybe the most common mistake, maybe you're in there with trading against the trend. The most common mistake is, uh, I think, when it comes to selling stop losses. You know, first of all, if you're not selling a stop loss, you're just hoping the market is going to go in your favour. You don't really have a strategy for getting out if you're wrong. And that's a real issue. You know, if you can't admit you're wrong, uh, that's a real problem when it comes to trading. But let's say you do use stop losses. You're sensible. You think, I am going to use a stop loss on a trade. Um, I think probably the most common mistake when using stop losses is setting them far too tight to where the market is trading. And we're going to look at a great example in a second for this. So you, you don't even give the trade time to uh, work in your favour. You're so worried about losing on the trade 
you're not even giving it a chance to be a winner. So um, to see a real example from last week, we're going to take a look at the price of oil. I think oil is, is as good an example as any to illustrate where people can go wrong with stop losses. So what we've got here, we've got uh, each candlestick represents an hour and we've got the, the, the last week of July, the beginning of August as our, as our trading view. Let's take the last day here. So this is on the 4th of August that we've got on our chart here. So the market traded as low as $48.48. That was 11 o'clock in the morning. The high for the day was $49.61. That's at 7 o'clock in the evening, UK time. So the market has travelled through uh, $1.13 of range. So 113 points of range. And that does suggest that's a, that's a pretty typical day, I think, for, for the, the price of oil, looking at uh, you know, the, the last week. Clearly, we had a big day there. But typically, you know, a 113-point move is not an unusual one for the price of oil. But plenty of people will try and trade a volatile market like this with incredibly tight stops. You know, let's say you're trading it, you're buying oil somewhere, and you're using a 10-point stop, a 15-point stop, a 20-point stop what are the chances you've got it right? Yeah, chances are you're going to get stopped out just in the noise of the market. So you're not giving your trade time to work out. And if you're buying in here because you think it's going up and using a 10, 15 point stop, you're almost asking the market to stop you out, you know, because this is on a day where the market moves through 100 points, you know. So I suggest we need to give some thought to the size of our stops. Don't be afraid to use wider stops and trade a little bit smaller and set them in logical areas rather than just buying or selling randomly and hoping the stop works out. For example, and it's always easy to look at these things in the past, of course, but we've talked about setting stops before. In the er well, early morning, sort of between 8 to 11 o'clock, we saw the market, the price of oil, come back down to about $48.50, $48.60. And over the previous couple of days, you can see it here and here and here and here. Whenever we've seen the market dip down to sort of 48.30, 48.50, we'd see the buyers come back out. So if we're, if we're buying in here somewhere, a logical place to have our stop loss is the other side of these old lows. So it might mean if we're buying at 48.80, our stop is going in, you know, 60, 70 points away. But if we're looking for a bigger move, who cares? You know, we're giving the market time to prove us right rather than setting a stop loss that's just going to get taken out during the normal noise and normal trade of the market throughout the day. So there we go, I think the three most common mistakes, trading against the trend, trading far too big in terms of the size of your trades when compared to the size of your account, and probably the most common one, setting stop losses far too tight. So you just get knocked out in a small move against you, which is just normal market noise. So uh, a little bit of a different approach this week, but hopefully you know, it's given you something to think about when it comes to your own trading. Next week, we'll take a look at another different trading strategy. As usual, if you have any questions about what's been covered today or something you'd like us to cover in the future, just leave us a message in those comments uh, down below. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed, if you click that button that should have magically appeared there, uh, you'll get automatically notified when the next videos get uploaded. But uh, for this week, from me, David Jones and Trading212. We'll leave things there and I hope you have a good trading week.